So I recently started building an e-bike and I didn't intend on making these videos at first because well, there's a lot of e-bike builds already on YouTube and I didn't really feel like I was gonna contribute anything new. When I started building the bike, I ran into a few uncertainties when it came to the installation of the rear hub motor. Now, I went searching on YouTube, probably like you are right now, and I noticed that a lot of the builds and the installation videos glossed over some of the finer details of the washer assembly with the rear hub motor, where the washers go, why they go there, and what you can do when you're stuck, missing parts, and that sort of thing. So I made this video to hopefully clear up some of those uncertainties for you and show you my experience along the way, and hopefully this helps you with your build. So let's get started. So let's begin by looking at the rear wheel that is coming off of the mountain bike that I'm using for my e-bike. And you can see that I've already gone ahead and removed the sprockets, so the uh, cassette, the series of sprockets, off of the rear hub, and we're left with a bare hub. Now, there is a spacer here that we can just simply slip off, and this exposes this shaft that would run through the bearings inside this, this hub here. And there also appears to be a dust boot here, which I might need to get a screwdriver to pick out of there. But essentially that's what's inside of this hub. And this spacer here is key. And we're gonna see that in a second because it presses down and sits on the face of the inner race of that bearing. Now the lock ring has been removed, but I can just slip it on top here without actually fastening it on and you'll see that the spacer goes and fits right between the lock ring. So the splines that you use to actually remove or tighten the lock ring, this spacer fits right in between. And if you look at this from the side, if I were to actually tighten this thing down, that spacer sits proud of this lock ring surface. And that's another key thing to look for here. So let's pay attention to that. And now let's take a look at the hub motor assembly that I bought for my e-bike. So now we're looking at the rear hub motor from the Chinese e-bike kit that I got from Leaf Bike. And it came with all the electronics and the rear hub motor and all that sort of thing, but it is missing a few small key parts. And so looking inside the hub here, you'll notice that there's no dust cap, which is definitely a nice to have. And you don't see any sort of spacer. You'll see the 12 millimeter shaft protruding from the bearing, but Again, no spacer. The bike did come with these styles of spacers here, and you can see there's flats inside the washer, and those flats line up with the machine flats on this shaft here that fit into your rear dropout. They comes with torque washers and lock nuts. But again, not that same style of spacer that we saw on the wheel that came with the mountain bike. Now this spacer here has a smaller inner diameter so it doesn't fit on top, which is a little unfortunate. Now the spacers that were included with the kit do not fit. So if I put this lock ring sort of back in place there, these spacers don't fit inside of the splines on the lock ring. And so you'll see it sitting on top. It does not pass through and that's the big problem here. So if you were to take these spacers, and even if you were to stack them up inside of the hub before putting the lock ring on, well, they're not gonna pass through the lock ring. And if you put them on after the lock ring, and so if I put this back on here, and I just sort of let it sit in place, and I put this on here, and this is what I'm using between my lock ring and the mountain bike frame. Well, when you go to pedal the bike and this hub starts spinning, the lock ring spins with it, and it basically just starts grinding away at the spacer that you used, and there's a lot of resistance in there. Now, this is a thicker washer, but some videos I've seen on YouTube say, hey, the th really thin washer is your axle spacer, and put that on top of your lock ring and between the mountain bike frame. Well, that's still not gonna solve the problem because you're still gonna be grinding away at that uh, thin washer. And so the solution here is to come up with a spacer. And this spacer, like I said, I'm gonna actually sacrifice this one from my mountain bike. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to redrill the center to fit over the shaft. There's enough meat on this thing to do that. 
And when I seat that on top of that bearing, just as with the stock wheel from the mountain bike, the face here will end up sitting proud of the surface of the lock ring. And that's key because again, that's gonna sit against the mountain bike frame. The other side is gonna be touching the inner race of these bearings here. And that's the other key part because the inner race stays fixed with this shaft. And when you're pedaling, it's the hub that's turning with the wheel and the shaft stays stationary. So whatever spacer that you use, if you sacrifice the one from your original bike, uh, original bike wheel, or if you find some washers with a large enough inner diameter to slip over the shaft, but a small enough outer diameter to pass through the lock ring and not touch the outer race of the bearing. Whatever you do, don't put washers in there that are touching the outer race of that bearing because what's gonna happen is those washers are gonna do the same thing as the axle washer or whatever you wanna call it on the outside of the lock ring and it's just gonna grind away at the uh, outer race of that bearing. And this is bad of course because if you're doing that inside of the hub, you're grinding away little pieces of metal that will end up finding their way into your bearing and you'll probably end up with a seized bearing in there. So again, this guy here can be drilled out and he can be slipped over top of this shaft. And again, the key part here is it's gotta pass through the splines of your lock ring and then sit proud of that surface to seat against the mountain bike frame. Then you'll have things working correctly. And if you have a really large uh, rear dropout, uh, say something bigger than the standard 135 millimeters of a uh, pretty standard mountain bike, and you need to space out uh, even farther, once you're outside and above the surface of this lock ring, then you can go ahead and use spacers like this because again, now the lock ring is not gonna to be touching this spacer, okay? So that's when you can use these guys here between your dropouts. Otherwise, uh, only use these guys on the outside of the dropouts. And even then, I'm not even sure why you really would need one of these guys on the outside of the dropouts because that's when you actually use the torque washer if you have a small motor. And so what you do on the outside of the dropouts, that's when you use your uh, lock washer or so your torque washer here and your locking nut or your flange nut and this would sit on the outside of the dropout and keep in mind too that these torque washers are only going to be good for handling small amounts of torque you're probably going to want to invest in a t actual torque arm a proper torque arm for your bike your e-bike if you have a large enough motor because these things can put out quite a bit of torque and you definitely don't want the shaft uh, prying itself out of your rear dropouts. I'm back now after successfully drilling out the center of the spacer and you can see that it fits over the 12 millimeter shaft. What's a little more difficult to see is on the inside. I was also successful in prying out the dust cover from the original wheel and it does fit inside this hub because they should be roughly the same dimensions since the cassette's gonna fit over top. And so we're at that point now where we can slide our cassette over top and I just have two other sprockets here to slide over top and now of course I have the lock ring to fit on and so I got it started by hand and you can see that it spins around and does not contact that center spacer at all and of course it still fits through the lock ring because we did not modify the outer diameter of that spacer. So with the wheel and the hub assembly back on the bike, we can take a look at the washer and nut situation. So on the sprocket side here, we have a lock nut on the outside of the frame, along with one of the torque washers on the outside of the frame. Now, if, look, if you look inside of the frame here, between the frame and the uh, cassette, there are no spacers and so my mountain bike has a standard 135 millimeter dropout and therefore the kit that i ordered was also a 135 millimeter matching uh, kit and so i didn't need any additional spacers in there other than that one that i showed you that i drilled out and so now when we actually go to turn the wheel here and the whole cassette assembly turns 
there's no rubbing, which is perfect. That's what we want. And on the brake disc side, again, there are no additional washers between the hub and the frame. But on the outside, we have our single torque washer with our single lock nut. And again, this wheel will spin freely and there is no rubbing. And so when the cassette spins, nothing rubs against the frame. And that's exactly what we want. And so we can take a look at this from one more angle here. And again, everything is moving, nothing is rubbing. The only thing I had to do was I had to adjust my disc brake, of course, on the disc brake side uh, to keep that from rubbing because the spacing was ever so slightly different. So it just needs to be loosened off. You can squeeze your handbrake and then tighten everything back up and your disc and your brake shoes should be in alignment. So that concludes this video, guys. I hope it provides a little more clarity with the spacer and washer arrangement for your hub motor on your e-bike. And be sure to subscribe to my channel or check back frequently for more videos on this e-bike build. I plan on covering a few more aspects of this build in future videos. Thanks for watching.